Hello everyone. So, good morning, good evening, namaste. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope everyone is doing well. So, uh, today we are going to understand about call forking and uh, we'll also understand how a branch ID in via header of SIP is related to call forking. So, let's try to first understand what is call forking it is also called as SIP forking right so call forking is a way to forward your call to multiple endpoints so it is the way to forward your single SIP call to multiple SIP endpoints this is called call forking or SIP forking so at the same time here a single call will ring at ring on multiple endpoints at the same time right? how it is useful is suppose you suppose there is a manager who can't afford to miss any calls right so first let's understand uh, diagrammatically what is called forking this is a single call coming to the server and the user have a requirement of call forking where he can receive the same single call on multiple endpoints maybe his cell phone home landline assistant three or four multiple endpoints so the same single call will ring at multiple endpoints so this is call forking so suppose there is a manager who can't afford to miss any calls be it any point of time then what he will do is so there will be call forking enabled and whenever there is a call coming on his phone so it will be routed to all the endpoints all the SIP endpoints and all the SIP endpoints will start to ring right so this is call forking now there are two types of call forking actually one is called as parallel forking other is called as sequential forking so what happens in parallel forking is a call a single call which will be forked by the server to all the endpoints all the endpoints here will ring at the same time so they will start ringing at the same given point of time but so all the endpoints will send the 180 ringing back to the server all the endpoints will send 180 ringing back to the server but the endpoint who receives the call first will send suppose endpoint C receives the call first so endpoint C will send a 200 OK so 200 OK if you remember the SIP call flow 200 OK is generated as soon as the called party accepts the call as soon as it accepts the call so suppose C accepts the call before A and B so it will generate a 200 OK and it will respond to the server with 200 OK message what happens to the other one other two they will stop ringing and a cancel message will be generated a cancel message will be generated by the server for both of them for both of them A and B so and after 200 OK we know it, it will be AG and the media negotiation so C will start talking to the calling party A and B it will stop ringing so this is called parallel forking now what is sequential forking in case of sequential forking all the endpoints where the call has to be forked will not ring at the same time but they will ring one by one and how that happens suppose we have three endpoints where the call has to be the SIP call has to be forked so the first call will go to A if it's available other two will not come into picture so the call will be established between the A as a call party and the calling party but suppose A is busy maybe on another call not available so it will respond to the server with a busy message 
as soon as the server receives that A is busy then it will send the same invite or it will fork the call to B as an endpoint. If B is available the call the media will be established. If again B is not available and it sends a busy message as well or maybe not available then the call will be forked to the C as an endpoint. So this is sequential forking. The endpoints ring one by one but in case of parallel uh, forking all the endpoints ring at the same time. So this is called forking. So if you see the call flow so this is the call flow for parallel forking all the endpoints will start ringing at the same time. See, server sends uh, the invite to both the endpoints, Nitin and Mukesh. Both Nitin and Mukesh responds to the server with 180 ringing. With 180 ringing. See, Nitin sending 180 ringing to server, Mukesh sending 180 ringing to the server. But only the party who accepts the call first here Nitin accepts the call first so he sends 200 OK to the server and that gets forwarded to the calling party and the media established for Mukesh a cancel will be generated by the server and the call will be terminated so this is parallel forking in case of sequential forking the invite will be forwarded to the to Nitin first, the first call uh, called party. If Nitin is busy and sends a 486 busy message to the server, server acknowledges it, and then the same invite will be forged to second called party, which is Mukesh. And Mukesh will send a if it's if Mukesh is available, he will send a 180 ringing 200 OK, and the media will be established. So this is sequential forking. Now how a branch ID so branch ID you will be able to see the branch ID parameter in via header if you guys remember when we, when we went through the SIP header explanation uh, video so in via header it's a mandatory header there is something called as a branch ID so branch ID actually allows the servers to match responses to the forked requests so suppose uh, invite is getting forwarded to multiple endpoints now how a calling party or the server who forked the call will understand which party has responded to it so branch ID comes into picture so branch ID always starts with this few characters Z9 HG and the letter will be uh, the other characters will be different so each branch ID is unique so example suppose this server forwards the call to three endpoints each will have each will have a different sorry so each invite that will be sent to this endpoints will have a different branch ID unique branch ID now when the party C responds to the server with 200 OK. This will this will be the way the server will understand that this branch has or that this party has responded. How it will match the branch ID? It will try to recognize that. It will recognize that with the branch ID because every endpoint will receive a different branch ID in the via header when the invite is sent to them right and the branch who responds to the so or the endpoint who responds to the server that branch ID will be matched and that was the way how a server understands which party has responded to me in a fogged call so that is how a branch ID is important so I, I hope this video is inform informative and useful uh, to you guys. Please comment and subscribe to my channel. Uh, share the video with uh, your friends whosoever are in VoIP domain and let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, in next video I'll try to explain you guys about the local and remote tag in to and from, from header. Okay. Till then everyone uh, have a great day and uh, bye bye.